Hello everyone. We are now ready to get into some of the fundamental math that we'll be using in this course. So the first thing we're going to talk about is something called a Euclidean vector. And by the way, it's great that I'm typing and not writing because my handwriting is terrible. Okay. <laughs> so, so silver lining of the pandemic. All right. Okay. So before we get into Euclidean vectors, let's just quickly review the Cartesian coordinate system. So let me draw some coordinate axes here. Okay. So that's more or less straight. Okay. So what, if we're making, if we're trying to plot points in 2D, we say, okay, this is the positive X axis in this direction. And let me draw some arrows just to make it nice. Okay. And here's the negative X direction. And then here we've got the positive Y direction and the negative Y direction. Okay. So let me just write that real quick. So here's plus Y. And then down here we have negative Y. Okay. So, and then when we want to actually plot a point on this grid, um, we say, okay, we can give its X coordinate. So if I drop a perpendicular down here to the x axis, okay, let's say that this has an x coordinate of a, positive a, and then let's say it has a y coordinate of b. So then we could describe this as an ordered pair a comma b. Okay, so that's one way of plotting points in the Cartesian plane. Now, actually, a Euclidean vector is really the same thing. We just think about it a little bit differently. So we're still in the Cartesian grid, but what we're going to do instead is we're going to draw an arrow from the origin here up to that point AB. And we're going to give it an arrow. So a vector is an arrow which has a length and a direction. So it's another way of looking at this information of an ordered pair. So it starts at the origin, 0, 0. Right, that's the origin there. Let's make that a little smaller. It's going to take up a lot of space. Okay. So the origin, whoops, the origin, 0, 0. And we draw the arrow from there up to this point AB. So, so that's another way of, of saying it. And so notation-wise, what we would say is V, the vector V, is equal to AB. And we also draw this little hat or this little arrow over the V. Notation-wise, that means, if I put the arrow here, that means this is a vector. Okay, so vector V is equal to AB. It's an arrow. It's got a length and a direction. Cool. Cool, cool. So what if, oh, actually, let's just do one more quick example. So, I mean, we've got the coordinates, right? That's one way of looking at it. And we can also look at it as the length and direction. So here's another vector. It's got the same length, but a different direction. In fact, it looks like the coordinates should be a negative b. So it's the same, got the same x coordinate, but the y coordinate is actually flipped, reflected across the x axis. Okay, so this is the reflection of this, this is the reflection of this vector across the x axis. So same length different direction. Okay. And so the coordinates differ. Okay. So now let's try to think, what do we do to add vectors together? So, so we know how to plot them now, but what if we have another vector? Let's say this vector and we'll put the arrow on there. And so this vector, let's say it had X coordinate C and then it, whoops, and then it had Y coordinate so let me get that all nice there. So we got our x coordinate C, and then we've got our y coordinate of D, let's say. Okay, so this is the vector C, D. Okay. So the question is, how do I add these two vectors together? I know how to add numbers. I mean, one, one plus one is two, last time I checked, right? But how do I add vectors? Well, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Actually, all you have to do is add them component-wise. 
So you add the x to the x and then the y to the y. So we got our example here. We say vector a, b plus the vector c, b. So algebraically, this is just going to be a plus c, b plus d. So you add the x components and then you add the y components. Um, now, what if you go to plot this? What does that look like? Where is that going to show up on the Cartesian grid? Well, so one thing you can do, there's this nice little trick. Let me take the vector CD, make a copy of it actually. Oops, I selected the wrong thing there. Hang on. So let me select that vector CD. Okay, there it is. Um, and I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to slide it up here and I'm going to put the tail of that vector. So it used to be the origin, but now I'm actually going to put it at the tip of AB, so at the tip of the arrow. And actually where I end up is what the sum is of these two. So here we have our A plus C, B plus D. These get a little big. Let me make them smaller. Not that small. Hang on. <laughs> 16, there we go. Um, okay. So... That is called the tip-to-tail method. That is a way to visually add vectors together. Of course, you can do it algebraically as well, and this, this is what you would do on the computer, but this, this is a nice way to get to the answer visually. So here is the final vector that we would get. So it starts at the origin and it ends up here. Okay, let me make the head a little bigger just so we can see that that's the one we're talking about. Okay. Now, the other thing you notice, I mean, I could have done the same thing by taking the vector AB, taking that, making a copy, sliding it over, and then putting the tail of AB a, at the tip of CD. And that, that would end me up at the same place. And the reason is because addition is commutative. So it doesn't matter if, if I add, you know, 1 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 1. So it doesn't matter what order I put the vectors in. Um, but it's kind of cool. Visually, what you see is it makes this parallelogram, actually. So that's another way to understand vector addition is with this so-called par parallelogram method, um, that you just form the parallelogram between these two vectors. So by themselves, they form kind of a triangle between them, right, if I put this here. Um, but then complete the parallelogram on the other side, and th this vertex of the parallelogram gets you the vector from the origin. Okay, cool. So that's vectors um, and how to sum them. So let's do just a quick exercise to make sure that that's clear.